Hello and welcome. Today we're doing a question from Lee Code called Binary Tree Maximum Path Sum. It's hard. We're going to jump right into it. Path in a binary tree is a sequence of nodes where each pair of adjacent nodes in the sequence has an edge connecting them. A node can only appear in the sequence at most once. Note that the path does not need to pass through the root. The path sum of a path is the sum of the nodes values in the path. Given the root of a binary tree, return the maximum path sum of any non-empty Path. Example one, we have the tree with one, two, three, and the maximum path is made by connecting all three nodes. So we go from two to one to three to get a maximum path sum of six. Example two, we have negative 10, 9, 20, 15, and 7. Here, the maximum path sum would be made by connecting 15 to 20 to 7. If we were to somehow bring 9 into the mix, we'd have to connect it with negative 10. So that overall would be negative. So the max path sum is made by these three nodes, and the output is 42. Okay, like always, we're just going to start off with some examples. Okay, say we have the following example. We have a root node with some value x, a left child of y, and a right child of z. Now, what are all the possible max paths we could make? If they were all positive we could take every single value so our path would be y x z if we only wanted to take one child it could be x y or x z or we could take all the nodes individually as our path so it could be just y just x or just z so how would that look like with some numbers filled in so in the following examples let's see how it actually looks like played out if we have negative one five six it makes sense to take all three of these nodes so this entire path would give us a sum of 10. in the following examples we want to take just the root and a child so this would be one and five this would be one and six over here we just want the left child here we just want the right child and here we just want the root node by itself now let's take a look at one more example say i have the following tree and it's intentionally just a little bit complex so so that way we really have to be clear with our logic. Okay, this is my tree. Let's start all the way at the bottom, right over here, right? We have negative one, five, six. Imagine this is my tree. This is all I'm dealing with right now. What is the maximum path sum for these nodes? We saw that over here, right? We want to take all three of these values to get a maximum path sum connecting five, negative one, and six for a total of 10. So right now my max path sum value is going to be 10. Now let's take this a level above. Say I'm considering the subtree that starts with node three. So three, negative one, two, five, and six. We know this over here is 10. Now, how does it look like with this whole subtree? Well, these are all positive. So what if we just included everything? We did two, three, negative one, six. But to go back to five, we would have to cross negative one again. And we can only use each node at most once. So we can make use of both the children. So what we're going to do is see what the max child was for this subtree here. That was six. So we're going to go with six which means six plus minus one, which is five, is going to represent this left-hand side for this subtree over here. We can essentially just replace this entire tree with the value of five. So if we did that, it would look something like this. And now we're back to our three node problem, right? We have three, two, and five. What is the maximum path sum here? Well, we would just add all of these together. So that would be three plus five plus two, which would be 10. And this is the same as our current maximum path sum. So we don't really need to update anything here. Now, if we take this another level up, we're looking at node 12 as the root of our subtree right here. What is the maximum path sum we can make up until this point? So we need to do the same thing again, right? We can't take both left and right children. So we want to take the one that has the greatest value. That's going to be this left child over here. So we're going to use that and add our own roots value to represent this entire right child for 12. So this value instead of three could essentially be rewritten to be eight. So we have eight over here, 12 here and four here. Again, what is the maximum of path sum? We add all of them together. The child nodes are both positive values. So it makes sense to include them, right? We're going to have four plus 12 plus eight. So that's 24 and that's greater than our current max path sum. So we go ahead and update that. And what does that path actually look like? Well, putting the values back in here, we had five, negative one, six, three, 12, four and two, right? So what our path right now is, is 4, 12, 3, negative 1, and 6. This entire path is connected and no nodes are being repeated. This total sums up to 24. And we're just going to keep doing the same thing all the way to the top. So if we were just looking at this subtree, this subtree has a maximum path sum of 24. Now bubbling this right back up to its root, we want to see which child we should go with. This has a sum of 4. This one had a sum of 8. So 8 was greater. We go with 8 and 12 so that's going to be 20. we're passing in 20 as a left child for eight and now we want to see what the right is but we don't know what the right is we have to compute this first so starting all the way at the bottom again right we start at node seven it has no left and right children so the maximum path sum would just be itself so that's going to be seven so we pass that up to 13 the right child is seven 
and same thing over here, the left child is negative 2. The maximum path sum here would be 7 and 13. This is a negative number, so we don't really need to include this. The max path sum at this point is 20. We're still less than 24, so no updates are needed. But here, now we have 20. We pass that to 8. So what we're going to do is 20 plus 8 plus 20, and that gives us 48. So our new max path sum would be 48. And what does this path look like, right? We're basically going from 7 to 13 to 8 to 12 to 3 to negative 1 to 6. And that's what we're going to do to solve this problem, right? We're just going to break it down into a root node, a left child, and a right child. Now we're doing a lot of repeat operations and it is a binary tree. So we're going to solve this using recursion and a depth first search. So let's go ahead and code this up and then run through an example afterwards. Okay, to code this up, the first thing I'm going to do is initialize our max path sum variable. This is going to keep track of the maximum path sum we've seen so far. And this is going to be a reference in every single recursive call stack. So I'm just going to make this a global variable. So it's going to be solve.max path sum. And I'm going to initialize it to negative infinity. Now, since we are going to be referencing this in every single call, I'm also going to write my function under this over here. So let's call this path sum. And it's going to take in a root. Now, with the recursive function, there are two things we need, right? A base case and a recursive case. What is our base case? What if root is not? So if root is none, we're just going to return. So if not root, we return. Now, what do we return? Remember, we want to build up a maximum path sum. It has to be an integer. If root is none, we're just going to return zero. And what this means is we've gone all the way to the bottom of our call stack. Say we are at seven's child. The root is none, so we're going to return the max path of zero. Now, if the root is not none, so it does exist. Now we want to figure out what the right and left subtree values are, respectively. So left is going to equal path sum with root dot left and same thing for right, right is going to equal path sum with root dot right. Now, what if they are negative? In that case, we wouldn't want to take their value. So I'm actually going to max this with zero. This is just going to mean that if it is negative, we're going to take the zero instead because that would be a higher value which is the same as not taking it. So I'm going to do that for the right as well. So now we know our left and right values. So now I want to figure out what the maximum path sum is for the subtree I am on. And if it is greater than my current max path sum, I'm going to go ahead and update that. So self.maxPathSum is going to be the max of what's there right now and what we get by adding up all three values. So left plus right plus root dot Val. And if left and right are negative, we're just going to use the zero instead. So we're going to get the maximum value we can get with our root. If that is greater than maximum path sum, we update that value. So now that we were able to make a maximum path sum and see if it's greater than the one we have, we want to see if we can make a maximum path sum with our roots caller. So we're going to need to pick either a left or right side and return that with our nodes value added to it. So we're going to be returning max between left and right and adding in root dot val. And this is our path sum function. So now we want to call this and all we have to do in the end is return maximum path sum. So return solve dot max path sum. So let's go ahead and submit this. Okay, we're getting a runtime error not supported between int and string. This should have been a float. Okay, so now it's actually negative infinity. So let's go ahead and submit this. Okay, right, now it is accepted. So let's go ahead and run through a super quick example. Okay, for our input, say we have example two over here, negative 10, 9, 20, 15, and 7. We're going to be going through our code line by line to see exactly what we're doing. Okay, the first thing we do is initialize max path sum to be negative infinity. We define this function and now we call this function with negative 10. So we're calling path sum with negative 10 and we're in this function now. We know root is not none, so we don't return zero. But now we figure out what left is. Now left is going to be the max between zero and path sum of its left child, which is nine. So we're calling path sum again with root node nine this time. Again, we go in here, root exists, so we don't return. We figure out what left is again. Left is going to be the max between zero and path sum of the left child of nine, which is none. So we call path sum again. And this time we're passing in none. So now that root is not there, we would return zero. So we return zero here and we return this back to our caller. So this was called by nine and we want to figure out the max between zero and zero. That's just going to be zero. So left is going to be zero. Now we want to figure out right. Again, we max it with zero and root dot right. So nine's right is none. We're going to have the same thing again. This is just going to be zero. So all of right is also zero. So now we know what left and right are for root nine. We want to figure out what the max path sum is. So this is going to be the max between what we have there right now and left plus right plus root dot value. So root dot value is nine, which means now we set max path sum to be the max between negative infinity and nine. That's going to be nine. So we go ahead and update that. And now what we do is return the max between left and right 
Either way, it's going to be zero plus root.val. So we're returning nine to our caller. And what called us? That was this over here. So this is now going to be nine. So now we know what the left is for root of negative 10. We want to figure out what the right is. So we call this with right's child of negative 10, which is going to be 20. So we're calling path sum again with 20. Now we want to figure out its left and right. Of course, first we do left, so it's going to be max between zero and its left child, which is 15. So now we call this again with 15. Root is not none, so we don't return, and we want to figure out what left is. Left is going to be the left child of 15, which is none, and we know the path sum of none is going to be zero, so we're basically figuring out the path sum between zero and zero, the max of that is zero. So the left of 15 is going to be zero. And same with right. Right is also going to be zero. It is none. So now we want to see if we should be updating max path sum. What is left plus right plus root dot val? That is going to be 15. It's greater than our current max path sum. So we go ahead and update this. And now we want to return to our caller. So this is going to return the max of left and right, which is zero plus 15, which is 15. So we know the left of 20 is going to be the max between zero and 15, which is 15. And the right of 20, we're going to be doing the same thing. We know that seven has no left or right children. So the max path for this is going to be seven. So now we know 20's left and right values. We want to do max path sum again. Left plus right plus root dot val. So 15 plus 7 plus 20, that is 42. So we go ahead and update this. And now we return the max between left and right plus root dot val. So we're going to take 15 and we're going to add to 15, 20. So we're going to get 35 and return that. So this now becomes 35, which means right is now 35. And we know the left and right values for our root of negative 10. We do the same thing again. We add them all together. So negative 10 plus 9 plus 35. That's going to be 34, but it's not greater than our current max path sum. So we don't update that. And all we do is return. So the max between left and right is 35 plus root dot val. That's going to make it 25. And we return 25. This is not being assigned anywhere. So we don't really need to do anything with the 25. And all we do at the end is return our maximum path sum, which was 42. And we can see that that is correct. So space and time complexity, if we have n nodes in our graph, we're going to be going through every single node in our binary tree. So that is going to be O of n for time. And for space, our recursive call stack could go as deep as the number of nodes in our tree. So that is also going to be O of n. We just went ahead and solved binary tree maximum path sum. If you have any questions whatsoever, of course, let me know down below. I will answer all of them. If this video was helpful, like, comment, and subscribe. It really supports the channel. And as always, I will see you in the next one.